Good afternoon to our international viewers, and thanks for joining us again for our English News Edition. I'm Daniel Cook, your host, weekdays at 6 p.m. The National Bureau of Investigation has been adopted by the Council of Ministers as a new body that will investigate corruption among the senior officials of both the state and the administration. According to the version approved by the government, the National Bureau of Investigation will be subject to the director of the state police. But unlike the first bill that was rejected, this bill provides that the criminal investigations will be carried out by the Attorney General through a group of prosecutors. According to the director of the Bureau, uh, appointing the director of the Bureau will be the responsibility of the Interior Minister, but it will require the consent of the Attorney General. The appointment will be for a five-year term. The draft has been elaborated in the recent months after being initially rejected by the Constitutional Court. According to sources, from or, um, sources of Ora News, it has now been compiled in cooperation with OPDAT and has the support of the U.S. The opposition leader has also given his approval. Last week, the opposition and the majority debated fiercely in Parliament over the adoption of this draft. The Prime Minister Rama claimed that the Bureau is part of the justice reform that the Ad Hoc Commission is currently working on and that the vote should be put off until the reform is complete. The chairman of the Democratic Party, Lulzim Basha, insisted that the government should vote on the draft immediately, accusing Rama of hampering the establishment of the Bureau. The opposition even submitted a, writ a written opinion that this variant of the draft is unconstitutional. Now the adoption of the bill by the Assembly requires a qualified majority of three-fifths, since it is an organic law. It remains to be seen whether the majority will have the 84 votes it needs to pass the bill, or whether it will be held hostage to a wider consensus. In a statement for Ora News, the chairman of the Socialist Movement for Integration, Ilir Mehta, welcomed the government's adoption of the Bureau. In an interview for Ora News, the former Prime Minister Saleh Barisha and the chairman of the SMI, Ilir Mehta, both commented on the National Bureau of Investigation. Mr. Barisha said that the draft adopted by the government is not in accordance with the Venice recommendations. He says the opposition will not vote for it, even though the Democrats previously supported the formula that was adopted today, which is the establishment of the Bureau as a branch of the judicial police. The SMI chairman, Ilir Mehta, had this to say, I have emphasized that to us, the most important thing is that the Bureau be established and be efficient. To us, it is important that the principles of the Constitution be respected. This is very important. It is also important that this is the variant on which the Democratic Party has agreed. Now it's up to the Parliament and the Ad Hoc Commission to decide on the issue and to adopt it in Parliament as soon as possible, said Mr. Mehta. In a meeting of the Democratic Parliamentary Group today, Chairman Basha indicated that the party will vote on the Bureau as long as it is based on the Venice recommendations. According to him, the Venice Commission has made it clear that the Bureau should be under the supervision of the prosecution. He said, it has been announced that the government has adopted a draft for the National Bureau of Investigation. If this version provides that the Bureau will be under the supervision of the prosecution, as the Venice Commission recommended, we will vote for the draft tomorrow. If not, then this is an attempt of the government to gain time and to fool the people and the internationals. The government attempted to do the same thing with the justice reform, said Mr. Basha. In these conditions, the talks over the Bureau have turned to the zero point. The draft the government adopted today will not have the support of the opposition, and it is not clear whether the majority will adopt it without the opposition's consensus. The head of the Supreme Court has spoken in favor of the justice reform today, which will transform the Supreme Court into a career court. This means that the judges of the Supreme Court will have to be appointed according to experience. Like the Minister of Justice, he also supports the idea that the criminal code should be rewritten rather than simply adjusted. He said, there are shortcomings in the codes of criminal and civil procedures. These codes have been in place since 1990 and most of them follow the Italian system at a time when that system was experiencing many problems with passing judgments within a reasonable time said Mr. Zagagnori. During the analysis of the Supreme Court for the past year, Zagagnori made the statement 
that the court has too many cases to keep up with. This is one reason he feels that the justice reform is necessary. He also commented on the case of January 21st, explaining that the case has been delayed because of the extremely high volume of work. He said that a decision will be made in February on whether the recourse will be accepted or whether the ruling of the appeals court will remain in force. 13,000 cases are waiting to be reviewed by the Supreme Court, which has been understaffed for two years. The former governor of the Bank of Albania, Ardian Fulani, has asked the administrative court to declare his dismissal invalid. He was dismissed at the order of the parliament and the Bank of Albania in October of 2014. The former governor has also filed a lawsuit to claim his salary from the time he was fired on September 18th of 2014 to the end of his mandate on November 11th of 2018. He filed the lawsuit just days after being declared innocent of dereliction of duty. The lawsuit will be reviewed by the administrative court, which will first determine whether the, whether the dismissal was correct or not, and then decide on the financial compensation the former governor is asking for. Fulani was accused by the prosecution of dereliction of duty in connection to the theft of 713 million lek and the buying and reconstruction of the former Daiti Hotel. For these accusations, the prosecution demanded five years in prison for Fulani, but both the Court of the First Instance and the Court of Appeals declared him innocent. In a meeting today between the American Chamber of Commerce and the General Director of Customs, business reps complained about the scanning and checking procedures at the customs points. They claimed that unfair fines are being imposed. They also complained about delays and rejected the reduced timetable for procedures, primarily for exporters. The representative of the American Chamber, Alketa Urici, Uruchi, supported their complaint, saying that the reduced timetables bring additional cost for businesses, cause delays, and negatively affect exports. The customs director, Pranvera Fagu, replied that the timetables are meant to come to the aid of the business sector. The business reps then expressed their concern about the referential prices, the fees for customs declarations, and the discrepancies within the system for payments made at different time periods. The vice customs director responded, We are not saying that we are perfect. There are always problems at the customs points, but we consider you to be our partners. In a meeting today on the law on local funds, Mayor Viliai stressed the importance of increasing the responsibilities of the local government. In his statements, Mr. Viliai asked for the law on local funds to be adopted by July of 2016. He said that Tirana is undergoing some real changes for the benefit of the citizens. Today we have a more organized city, he said. We should move on to long-term management and the government should give the city hall the necessary freedom over the money that is generated by the municipality. He pointed out that Tirana has the lowest property taxes among all the regional capitals and stressed that he is not asking for an increase of taxes, but only a shift of competences. That's the end of our edition for this evening. Thanks again for watching and please join us again tomorrow at 6 p.m. for more news in English. Thanks and have a great night.